Morning Warriors of Wolfnet, Coach here, back with another Alpha Strike List Builder Series. Today we're going to be building Word of Blake Opacus Venatori uh, List that I was using previous Thursday night on Thursday Night Throwdowns on the Wolfnet YouTube page. Um, this is a C3I list, so we're going to be getting into C3I today. But as always, we go ahead and start with our Units tab. Um, and we go ahead and input our rules and we go ahead and select our types the ones that I'm using today uh, factions is word of Blake and my inner sphere general list and availability we're going with jihad the age of destruction when nukes are plentiful. So as of always, I have my list here, um, but uh, my list is very, very dependent on one thing, and it is C3I. So that is the, uh, ooh, it's the Battletech version of sharing information between mechs and vehicles. So what it does is it allows other play other units to communicate their ranges based on the closest one that's inside a network so c3 works in in groups of six now this isn't like c3 or c3 boosted this is c3i so it's an improved c3 and it's kind of um basically what the uh, word of blake really leaned into heavily in the jihad era now these are all um they're Top secret mechs. Um, they're kind of they're called the Celestial uh, line. And today I chose the Archangel um, to start us off with. Now you'll notice one thing right off the bat: the guy has a ton of armor. Um, two, four, six, eight, ten. Ooh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, ten, ten armor, ten structure. He's a beefy boy. He doesn't move very fast because he's got all that armor. I uh, only moved six. Um, and I kept him at a skill four. Originally, I was thinking about going skill fives because what the C3 does is it allows you to use the range of your closest unit that's, that's in your pair of six instead of uh, the range that you are from your target. So uh, multiple times in the, in the game on Thursday night... Um, I was shooting at long range, but I had a short range modifier because we'll get into this in a little bit. But my VTOLs that also have C3I, which were paired with the Archangel, were able to transmit their data to the Archangel. That way, at a skill 4, I don't add the plus 4 for long range. I add a plus 0. So I was hitting with... I had very, very good to hit numbers uh, most of the night. I didn't roll very well, but um, can't do anything about that. So, yeah, at long range, my Archangel was hitting on sixes or sevens, depending on the TMM of my target. So, you pay for it. As you can see, it's 57 points at a skill four. Um, but, you know, that, that's the trade-off for being able to maneuver yourself into being able to get long range damage at short range modifiers. Uh, stat line for this guy is 444. Um, there's a theme kind of a, what I was going with with my mechs is I wanted to deal as much long range damage as I could because I was going to fully utilize the C3I network. So the Archangel, obvious choice. Uh, there's some bigger, badder boys out there uh, in the Archangel range, but this one had the most. Um, this one had the most long range damage that I could do. Next up is the Seraph. And I've got the Invictus. Um, he is also a really, really nice assault mech. Does three at long range, not as much. But his short and medium range is a, is a hell of a punch. Doesn't have quite as much armor. Uh, but he's got all kinds of stuff. He's got, um, he's got the C3I, case, indirect fire, melee. He's got a, a triple strength Moyamer. Um, just a bunch of stuff. That is really, really nice when I am 
kind of done with my long range barrage, as you would say. Um, I can go right into kind of kick that TSM in and do four, five, six damage, I think, for, uh, for, me uh, for physical attacks. And because it's melee, I can reach out to two inches. So, yeah, uh, uh, he's a size four, plus one for melee, plus one for uh, triple strength Moimer. So, that's pretty fun and awesome. Uh, he is, a, he is a, a beast when it comes to it. Next, I got the Diva, and we went with the Infernus. Now, the Infernus is, again, it's not the most powerful one, but it has three long range. So, I was kind of going for... Um, obviously a lot of long range damage. Um, and so the Infernus, there's a, there's a, the Dominus does five, five, one, you know, there's some, there's some heavier hitting medium and short range guys in there. But for what I was trying to go for, I was trying to maximize my long range damage. So a little coffee in the morning. So we're on our way with, um, getting our battle mechs in here. Um, next up is the Grigori. And we are going to go with the Invictus. So, um, another nice uh, little stat line here. It's not the... Uh, it's not as good as some of the others, but what it does do is it gives me that long-range damage. And it has a nice medium range damage at four. So I can, you know, he can be my little, you know, maybe gopher kind of guy. He moves eight, so he's slightly faster. But again, has a C3, has melee. Um, gets in there, 37 points. It's not too bad. Um, he's a, he's a good, just a good addition. And I have the mech, so I put him in there. Um, I didn't want to load up. The next guy is one of my favorites. It is the uh, the Preta Dominus, and you'll find out here real quick why he's one of my favorites. So he's a 12 inch 16J. So the big thing that stands out here is he has jump strength one, and that is, oop, it's really really nice to have. Um, let's see Dominus right there. He's very expensive, uh, 40 points, but I think for me, usually how I roll with this Preta is I will set him up on his own C3i network paired with one of my VTOLs, which we'll get to, obviously. But I like him to be an objective getter or a harasser or to just get behind get behind your, your, your line and just harass and make you fight on two fronts. Um especially with his jump ability because he's adding two because he's jumping all the time having that short range distance from the VTOL in C3i network really helps to mitigate and make sure he can still shoot so it'd be four for a skill plus two for jumping and normally I'd add another plus two for medium range or whatever range I'm in uh, and then the TMM so you're looking at 11s, 12s, 10s but now I can mitigate that minus two because I usually have one VTOL following around whoever he's going to shoot at at short range. Um, so it's really nice to, to have. He's he's one of my favorites. He he moves. The three three zero is really really nice uh, when you especially if you get in the rear. You add that plus one dice for uh, plus set of dice for uh, rear shots. And uh, he's he's one of my favorites. I I really enjoy playing with him. I try to put him in as as much as I can. Uh, the next set of mechs we have here are the Maliks. Now these guys are the faster of the units. Uh, we've got an Infernus. And you can see right off the bat that they move faster. They're 14 inches. Um, not a terrible stat line. But um, let's see what I say Infernus. You know, for 31 points, it's not too bad. It's a 2-2-0. One of the big things for me in these two Maliks that I have in my list are they have ECM. And ECM is critical when you're running a C3i list because ECM will break up the bubble that is your C3i. 
Now, ECM can be switched to electronic counter uh, communications measure or whatever. I can't remember what ECM stands for, but you can turn ECM into ECCM. And what that does is it negates a, another player's ECM. So for me, when I set my units on the table, everything is ECCM right off the bat so I can mitigate and um, cancel out my opposing player's ECM, which will cause my C3I bubble to, you know, get disrupted. Uh, electronic countermeasures uh, is what ECM stands for. So ECCM is electronic counter countermeasures. <laughs> no, I, I don't know what it is, but um, all I know is is it's in the rules there. You can turn ECM into ECCM. So you just flip the switch and it sends the disruption out uh, the other way. It's really nice, really handy, and it's almost a must to have for uh, for this list. Uh, it's a it's a backup. Now my other uh, Malik that I have is the Commonus. This one is the more damage dealing uh, version. Uh, it has three three zero again ECM moves fourteen inches. The nice thing is I'm getting these TMM threes. Uh, these guys are are flankers or objective getters. Um, they don't move as fast as I would like, but you know you, you work with the constraints that you have. Um, they they basically get in there, and I might pair these guys up with the Preta if I have some assault mechs in. It it's a very kind of you can mix and match a lot of stuff to get to your six C3I bubble and then extra if you're going over six unit uh, limit. But um, these guys are really great for, you know, domination, capture the flag, um, hold the line, you know, anything overrun, anything you need to get down the field fast. Sometimes I'll sprint these guys right out the bat uh, just to hopefully have some cover. Uh, but sprint them up the map so then I can fully utilize that 14 inch move to move in and out and, and either use them as getting a C3I range or you know getting behind the unit or or just pouring in some extra damage that's not coming in from long range from my assault mechs. So that's, that's another uh, uh, way that I go about that. Now the next units, um, you know me. I gotta have my VTOLs. So I went with some nightshades. Now, specifically, I went with a nightshade light PPC. Now you might ask why? Why did you go with that? Well, there's a simple answer is because one, it has C3I, and the other is because it has ECM. And the big thing is, is you pay for that you pay for that C3I and ECM in the 22 points. They move 24 inches. They're not very heavily armored. Um, they do have a zero star and a one one stat line for for damage, which came in very clutch uh, during my Thursday night uh, throwdown game because I had a Black Hawk that was just about destroyed. And I fired everything at him, and then I remembered, oh yeah, I've got two nightshades in its rear at short range. Or I had one that didn't sprint, um, nightshade in the rear. So I got an extra die, but the zero star is you roll your dice to see if you hit, and then it's a single dice on a four, five, or six, you do damage. So um, it came in clutch because I hit with both of them and destroyed the Blackhawk. So. But these guys are... Uh, Almost essential in my list, and I pair them down to a skill six because they are a little expensive. So I want to try to get them as cheap as possible. So I skill them down to a skill six, uh, gets them down to eighteen points, and they're they're a two prong essential unit. They have the C three I, which gets me the, the the short range data for my long range damage dealers, and two they have ECM. So when I flip that to ECCM uh, and then fly them out there, they disrupt whatever you know unit is going to cause me problems with an ECM. I know it's a little confusing, but just think one bubble cancels out the other bubble so I can still use my C3I. 
So I put two of those in my list um, at 18 points at skill six. And then the other is the Sprint Scout Helicopter. Now, the Sprint Scout Helicopter comes in a C3i version. So they have C3i. Um, and they move just as fast as you think they would. Uh, they're 26 inches. So I'm at the other end of the field. They're, they're almost essential to get into short range of your target. Now, the problem is they're VTOLs. They only have one armor, one structure, and VTOLs don't like getting into short range. So what I try to do is I try to get in the rear arcs of as many things as I can so they don't get shot at. Now, that doesn't always help or happen. Um, and in this situation, I skill them to skill 5 just to make them a little cheaper and to get to my... Um, oh forgot to make a mental note um, because you're probably wondering it's 357 points I also had my Malix at skill 5 um, the Malix don't do a lot of damage sorry about that I skipped it they don't do a lot of damage and they're they're more for um, the C3i the ECM and objectives uh, but you know in short range you know it depends on what kind of TMM you're shooting at 8s or 9s maybe 7s if it's a, an assault mech um, but anyway the sprints go down to a skill 5 to get to my 350 points. Um, but the one thing they don't have that the Nightshades do is they don't have ECM, but that's fine. They're an 11-point helicopter that has C3I, and it's essential to my list in order to get those uh, damage modifiers. So, yeah, that that's my list. Um, it worked out okay. Uh, my dice were a little not cooperative um, during the Thursday night throwdown, but uh, no, the C3I worked. Um, the one thing with this list is you don't th you don't have any big damage dealers. I mean, your highest damage output is four damage at medium range, four damage at long range. But it's it's kind of the death by a thousand cuts. Uh, this list is is made to really take advantage of getting a better two hit number with a short range modifier pretty much anywhere if you play it correctly um, you will find out that you'll get outside of a bubble or you'll unfortunately move pieces where you don't have line of sight with everybody and that kind of sucks because you're, you're wasting a turn of, of firing so um, but this list uh, this was something that I made I made this list a long time ago and have refined it over the years and it's just it's just fun I, I really like the models. They're really fun to play. And, uh, yeah, it's it's a fun list. I, I don't know if it's a tournament winner, but um, it, it definitely is one that will catch an opponent off guard if, they, if they're not looking for C3i. So there's my list. There's my Opaka's Venatori list. Uh, played for the uh, um, Domination thir Thursday Night Throwdown on Wolfnet uh, Radio YouTube. And I just want to thank you guys again for making these popular these videos popular. I know you guys like them, so I'll keep uh, keep making them. And I hope you guys all have a wonderful day. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the ring to get notified when we put new content out, which we try to do every week. Um, but uh, other than that, have a good day, and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.